All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Tim. I'm a fourth year medical student, and welcome to the channel. So today we'll be starting a series that we'll do once a week, and it's going to be titled the High Yield Question of the Week. And so the idea of this series is to cover high yield board exam questions, so shelf exams, step exams, complex exams, and really dive into the details of how to rule out the wrong answers, how to work through to the right answers, and then summarize with the highest yield info that you need to succeed on your exams. So we can work through these, do one a week. I'll try and keep it relatively brief. I won't go into the weeds on every single answer, but really give you the logic that you need to get through these questions. And if you have any suggestions in the comments, you can add those as well. And so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started with our first high yield question of the week. Again, my name is Tim and welcome to the channel. We'll start off with the question I've created here and then go through the steps to getting to the right answer. So here's the question. A 50-year-old, 53-year-old woman presents to her primary care physician for a routine follow-up. She has no concerns or significant health conditions. She had her first colonoscopy seven years ago, her mammogram last year, and her pap smear two years ago. She has never smoked cigarettes and drinks one to two alcoholic drinks per week. So of these choices, which of the following is recommended at this time? And we have colonoscopy, a hepatitis C antibody test, mammography, a low-dose chest CT scan, and we have a pap smear with high-risk HPV testing. And I'll give you a chance to pause the video if you want to work through this on your own. Okay, so we'll start here by crossing out the wrong answers, and we can talk through briefly why each answer is wrong, and then we can get to the summary here at the end. So the important thing on these questions is really to think about the timeline. What they're basically asking you is, do you know and remember the deadlines for the screening guidelines. And so each hint they give you in the question is information you can use to rule out the wrong answers. So let's start with the first one here. So the first piece of info we get is colonoscopy. So seven years ago, we know that typically colonoscopy recommendations are about every 10 years. So we know that she should still be okay as far as colonoscopy. The next thing we can cross off is a mammogram. She had a mammogram last year and I know it can be confusing that different societies recommend different mammogram timelines, but the USPSTF is typically what we use for these, and those guidelines recommend mammograms every two years. The next thing we can work through is a pap smear. She's had her most recent pap smear two years ago. And if you remember, a normal pap smear in this age group, 30 to 65, can be done every three years, or as answer E is suggesting, if you add the HPV testing, you can actually extend that out to five years. So in either case, she was good in terms of pap smear. It was two years, that's within three and five years. So she's clear on pap smear. And so now we're down to the last two here. So, and we can cross out low dose chest CT scan. If you remember, there's one sort of buzz disorder that you wanna screen with a low dose chest CT. And the situation you'll do that is in lung cancer but only in a very specific population. And you can see the hint there that she's never smoked cigarettes. And we'll get into that. That's the answer. That's the reason, the hint you can get from the question as to why that wasn't the right answer. And so you may be thinking hepatitis C virus antibody test is a little obscure, but it has been tested more recently. And so there were two ways you could approach this. You could just remember that hepatitis C virus antibody tests are recommended in most people or you could systematically use the information that they gave you in the question to help work down to the right answer. And so let's go into some high yield rec recommendations. So we'll start with hepatitis C virus because that was the right answer. So it is currently recommended for all individuals between the 18 and 79 years old at least one time. So if you see a patient in this age range in a question and you know that all the other screening choices are wrong, you can feel safe that most people will be recommended to get this at least once. And like we talked about, colonoscopies every 10 years between 45 to 75. These are all via USPSDF. And this recently changed. It used to be 50 to 75, but this was recently decreased to 45, which you'll probably see reflected on your newer exams like step one and step two and the complex level ones and level two. Breast cancer, USPSDF recommends a mammography every two years, and that's still at 50, 50 to 74. So similar age ranges there. And then one with multiple categories is cervical cancer. So you start cervical cancer screening at 21 and you continue a normal pap every three years to 29. 
Then at 30, you have a couple different choices and we've only included the highest yield things here. So keep in mind, there may be certain specific scenarios not on this slide. 30 to 65, you can continue doing the normal PAP or you can extend to five years if you add the high risk HPV testing. And so that includes 16, 18, 31, 35, among others. And then last, we have lung cancer. So this is a very specific screening guideline. You do it annually for those who have smoked 20 years or more between the ages of 50 to 80. And you can also, I believe, do that in those who have quit smoking within the past 15 years. But once they've quit for more than 15 years or if they've never smoked, as the, was the case in our example, you don't need to do this for non-smokers. So it's good to keep in mind, these are all high yield, um, but they are, these are not complete, nor are they comprehensive. So this is just to keep in mind the most important things that can get you this specific question and maybe a few other questions right if you just know these few things. Last here, we have the highest yield info. So start with ruling out the screening test you know agree with the guidelines. From there, you can narrow it down even if you're not sure which one's right. If you remember age ranges and frequency, for healthy individuals, you'll be able to keep this in better track, such as 50 to 75 or every five years, every 10 years. And then the last two highest yield points are related to hepatitis C. Screening is recommended at least once for all individuals aged 18 to 79. And on a test, if they don't give you that they have been screened, they're wanting you to assume that they haven't. And then last here, you start the screening via an antibody test. And this is a highly sensitive rule out test but if you can't rule it out, if a test is positive, you need to confirm with a more specific test such as PCR. To keep it brief, that's all we have today. So thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any suggestions or feedback you have in the comments.